and we're back talking some movie stuff real pastors here in our studios uh it is 10 30 a.m on a monday morning and we are mm -hmm. here recording wherever you, what you might be watching this at some random time because youtube am i right yeah uh, wherever you might be watching, watching during your fourth are, meal thank you for watching um yeah. so we're just gonna talk some stuff right yes yeah talk um, some stuff and our title for today is uh what did we learn about certain things that have happened and uh and that's what we're going to be talking about because some amazing things have been happening so you know and then some, one thing may not be amazing for some but amazing for us i guess uh but the first thing we want to talk about is uh what did we learn from the movie sonic 2 and uh and i feel like there's a very important lesson that we can learn here from what what this movie has done and what and what it did for the audience and things and uh so yeah so that's kind of what we're going to start with here because again we got to bring this out so uh first thing that i want to talk about is what we learned from sonic 2 and this being the fact that um first of all just look at those character posters if you see our sonic 2 review you understand how much um i loved what they did with this movie and i loved how you know they look like the characters and the stuff that they did with the, that they added into the movie from the video games and i thought that was great and that's kind of the that's pretty much the topic for this specific segment of what did we learn is from sonic 2 the fact that they actually took things from the video game and put them in the movie and guess what fans loved it who'd have thought yeah it's funny how that works who'd have thought oh you stay true to the source material and the fans show up for it they pay happily money me Growing up a Sonic fan all these years, happily took my three children to watch it because I knew you were going to be faithful to the source material. You had levels from the game, the character designs. I mean, first of all, let's just back up again to the first Sonic. You listened to the fans and fixed it because he was hideous. I went back and watched that trailer yesterday because <laughs> I, I, I remember hearing about it and never seeing it, and I had uh -huh. forgotten just how bad the original concept oh, was. It was terrible. Wow. Yeah. but the, And the fact they listened to the fans... Mm -hmm. And then what the fans do right before COVID, we showed up and watched it. COVID hit, went down, and then guess what? We bought the physical media because we wanted more Sonic. Mm -hmm. And then to kind of round out the, the pandemic a little bit, I guess, because now theaters are open and all this kind of stuff, you know, everywhere. And you come back, you bring in Tails, you bring in Knuckles, and Tails could have very easily just been horrible and a joke, did well with it. Um, they brought Knuckles back to his roots again. Certain set pieces are straight out of levels from different Sonic video games. Mm -hmm. They had cool stuff in there. Um, you know, th there's a scene where Sonic is underwater and he literally sucks an air bubble straight out of the video game. Something that normally people wouldn't, they think, to add that in a movie. But they took such good care for it. But it's like you can just tell that we care about the source material. We care about the fans. We want to make this movie for them. A and that's the thing. We showed up. So that's what we can learn, people. Respect the source material. Like, we're not saying it has to be word for word. We're not saying it has to play out exactly like it. Because, yeah, we get video games and stuff. But even the whole Knuckles story of, of him teaming up with Robotnik for the Emerald and all that. Straight out of Sonic... Was it Sonic 3 or just Sonic and Knuckles? I, I, I confused which one came first. But straight out of that. straight That's where the whole plot came from. Oh, you can do that? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. For instance, the Assassin's Creed movie I thought was, you know, fine. But they didn't have Desmond, which is an actual, you know, the actual star, the first ones that came out. They didn't have Altair. They didn't have any of these characters in it. They made up brand new characters and pretty much a new story. And guess what? Fans were like, well, I guess it was an Assassin's Creed movie, but no one from the games was in it. Hmm. It was weird. And it was just like, oh, but Sonic 2, you can do that. And it's beloved and people are saying great. Oh, how did they have success? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's like come on and you can and you can do this across the board with books with with uh um with vi with uh comic books you can do this with tv shows um you know lord of the rings for instance you can do it with the bible hollywood you don't have to change the bible you can make a movie with what the bible <laughs> actually says yeah i know not that hard Try to be all a pastor guy but i'm just saying <laughs> yeah yeah it, it works with that yeah, exactly yeah exodus no thank you not not so much yeah, uh, prince of egypt though Really good. Yeah, Prince of Egypt was good. That's they still took some liberties, but yeah. they still they still at least tried. That burning you know? bush scene's awesome. Anyway, we're getting off topic. My bad. <coughs> yeah, okay. but that's Let's the thing. But like, think about it. But 
Huh? What, was that a sneeze or a cough? I'm that was that a cough. Was... My bad, man. Oh, it, allergies. Oh. Yeah, I'm cough. Worried about you. That sounded terrible. <laughs> uh, my my mist- I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm still alive. We're good. <laughs> I'm we're good. But uh, yeah, this, but, this but, movie but think- will always have some sentimental value to me because this is my son's first big movie. Like he has been talking about this movie for months. And mm-hmm. Daddy, when's Sonic Two coming out? When's Sonic Two? I want to go see Sonic Two. He's watched the trailer three times this morning because uh, he's he's like, when's it now? It's like, when's it coming out to home? When's it gonna be home? Yeah. When's it gonna come home? And he has print. He is. I got to get him the. I'm getting him the poster for his room. There we go. He has, we've printed out the poster, the same poster they had at the theater. He carries it around like he. Love, he was so excited and he loved this movie and so did i and so did my wife and so did my daughter mm-hmm. um i played the first sonic video game i never played the sequels because mm-hmm. I, I only had a sega for a little bit but um i remember really loving the sonic video game and i watched the, the car, sonic cartoons when there's some i remember watching those and yeah i thought the character was really cool and uh so to see a property paramount actually appreciate what they have mm-hmm. and not just say hey look it's sonic go watch it because it's Sonic." no they actually took the time to do everything you said and um tell a really good story and make a really good movie mm-hmm. um this was it's like what we just talked about in our bad guys review go watch that if you hadn't um you you take a movie and it can be for the kids and it can be for the fans and it can be for the parents taking their kids and mm-hmm. paramount really crushed it with both these movies in my opinion yeah but uh yeah. Yeah, and this is and this is a movie like this is a property I should say that spans generations, mm-hmm. and so like the fa- and the fact that they nailed it for every generation for the new generation like Carter who's just now learning about Sonic, falling in love with the character like my kids who have some history with some video games that they've already played, but they've and they've seen some of the old cartoon shows that I've showed them, so they've like come to love the character. But but they don't have the the history like you and I like you know you said you play the first one but that's still mm-hmm. long history you know I've played a few more games of them but like so we ha- and for us as a parents who have the history so now you have this task of when you're trying to plead such a wide range of of an audience and of a fan base and it's like oh we can't how can you do that you just have to pick one and aim it at it no you don't Sonic mm-hmm. has showed us you can hit every generation who loved to this character. And, and look what you can do. The other example to this, to me, probably the better example, uh, be- best example for this, a- and doing it well, is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, that. Th- so you have this these generation span of fans, you know, and that's a lot more generations, right? That that of the books, and then you make these movies for the books. And I know everything isn't perfect, but it was so close that even those those faithful lovers of the books absolutely love that trilogy. And so they did a great job with that. And um, and so like you have the same kind of thing happening here with Sonic 2. Now you have these two movies, hopefully a third, where they can have like another great trilogy that is going to be happening. Because like you said with Paramount, they, they respect what they have. They appreciate what they have. The people working on it appreciate it. Because listen, doing a Sonic movie could have very easily turned into a Minions movie. Mm-hmm. They could have not respected it. They could have just made jokes about it and just be completely idiotic and only for kids. And us parents were sitting there like, gosh, it's, I know it's only an hour and a half, but can we get out of here? Mm-hmm. Like, but they didn't do that. And that's where I'm just like, thank you for doing it right. And yeah, other studios do the same. Pay attention to what they did. As you much can as do you it. want the kids to appreciate these movies, the parents are the ones paying to go see, for their kids to go see this movie. So, yes. Um, yeah, so to having that balanced out, uh, it's, it's, a re- it's a really cool thing. And this movie, I mean, it's been the big movie of the year so far uh, for like families because not yeah. only has it made a ton of m- money, people are going to see it, but that after we went and saw it like 11 o'clock a couple Saturdays ago, then we went to my nephew's birthday party, and the talk with the nephews mm-hmm. was – sonic 2 like we were yep. you know me and my brother-in-law michael were talking about how much we liked sonic 2 the nephew yeah. their kids were in the bounce house talking about pretending to play sonic 2 you know <laughs> yeah that's how you know you did a good job so yep and uh so yeah i mean hollywood p- families are going to go see these movies um yeah. i don't know how many times we have to prove it to you is proven with american underdog a few months ago proving yep. it to you with bad guys proving it to you with sonic 2 same two. 
sing to. Yeah. You know, so continue to uh, put a lot of time in this in this art of yours because it is art. You know, mm-hmm. it's hard to sound deep, but you yeah, know, no, but it is. But it is. And we're showing you that we love this. We're coming out. We're, we're voting with our dollars. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and this is more like so if you're going to have if you're going to have an IP like this, that, you know, that's already existing, like respect the source material. Mm-hmm. Or if you're going to do something new, like like Sing when it came out, because the first Sing was good as well. Yeah. And then you build on it with Sing too. Or uh, even with bad guys, you do something a little bit new, not built on existing IP. Like mm-hmm. these are the kind of things you can learn. And guess what? Like we'll be there for it. Yeah. Like we're more than happy to be there when you make quality movies like that. Yeah. And uh, just a shout out because this is how I am. You know, I love my documentaries. Mm-hmm. You know, if you like documentaries and you got Paramount Plus, go check out the documentary Console Wars, where they mm-hmm. talk about Nintendo versus Sega. And it talks about the Genesis. <laughs> Oh, there you Sonic go. and how the Sonic character was created. And when you watch that documentary, you kind and you see the passion behind the creation of this character and their property. You kind of see maybe why so much attention to detail was taken for these movies. Mm-hmm. You got to have the same passion if you're going to do something like that. Yep. So studios passion. learn from this. Yep. Learn from it. This is what the people want, and we'll be there. And uh, since you brought up streaming services, I thought it'd be a nice segue. segue. I'm beautiful. To Beautiful thing. So, yeah, so transitioning into that, you know, what can we learn from everything that is happening right now in the streaming world? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you may have heard that Netflix stock has plummeted. They've lost a bunch of money. They're losing a bunch of subscribers. Um, you know, HBO Max actually had an uptick due to the Batman uh, releasing on HBO Max. But the Bat, And so, and there's something that's interesting as well, Gary, that I'll just mention real quick. We can get into it later. Is uh, the Batman made... You know, HBO Max did away with the day and date stuff, like in theaters and that. Batman had his theatrical run, made a ton of money, still making a ton of money. And then now it released on HBO Max, up subscribership. You know, let's just put that out there. We'll discuss that in a second. But Disney Plus subscribership is has, has dipped a little bit. Um, Hulu's the same thing. So we're seeing this. I guess HBO Max went up, but we're seeing Netflix, Disney Plus, these others. Subscribership isn't going where it needs to be. And uh, so, yeah, so just kind of set the stage, Gary, your first thoughts on all this okay. that's happening. Well, I'll first uh, I'll say this. I'm a streamer. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm a streamer. Sorry. Uh, but uh, I love my theater experiences. I love my physical media. Yeah. With that being said, um, I subscribe to a number of these services we're talking about. Um, and I am with that being said, I'm happy to see the trend that we're seeing because it one is showing the message that people do want to get out of their homes and go to the back to the theater, mm-hmm. which was a fear of ours. When we started this show, we talked about it week in and yep. week out our theaters done. Well, happy to report. No, they're not. No. Um, and, but it's also with the numbers and people unsubscribing is showing that these streaming services can't just bank on their name alone. For yep. the longest time, Netflix was the only game in town. Mm-hmm. For, you know, and so I think they banked on that with just, okay, we'll just put the Netflix logo on things and people will watch it. Well, no, people are unsubscribing and I get on it and there's just not a whole lot right now. And I've seen, I've heard from a lot of people that have said, once Stranger Things is over, I'm done with Netflix. Mm-hmm. Because we don't use it for much anymore. They don't have the office anymore. They don't have Parks and Rec anymore. Um, yeah. Two of the biggest streaming things that people were watching. So that is a big reason why and they're putting out nonsense that people just don't want brought into their homes and they Mm -hmm. don't really care to see um you know hulu i use it because their show you know i I use my brothers actually (laughs) Um, (laughs) you know sorry to be that guy but i'm not gonna go through all the streaming services but of the ones that and, and i think disney's done the same thing netflix has done we're disney people are gonna subscribe to us what happened when it started? Got some great content, great shows. Mm-hmm. Mandalorian, one of my favorite shows ever. Now yeah. it's just kind of like, mm, okay, you know, yeah. um, Moon Knight's not, in my opinion, and hasn't been that great. Um, yeah. You know, and I think with the nonsense, people are just kind of like, we're, we're moving on. HBO mm-hmm. Max, and I said this the other day, of all the streaming services I subscribe to, if I had to get rid of all of them and keep one, I'd keep HBO Max because they continue to put out 
a wide variety of stuff to watch and great content. And mm-hmm. and they're respecting their their movies now by not having that name, same date thing. Yeah. Yeah, day and date stuff. Yeah, and I think and that's like I guess the thing that I'm I'm starting to see is um with all these streaming services, I think you're 100% correct. Is like they're banking on their name. They're banking on who they are. Netflix was the only one in town. So, hey, we'll just put out anything. And that was like, the, that's been a big gripe about Netflix for a while. It's like they have so much garbage on there that's not worth watching. For whatever reason, you determine garbage. Pick one. Like, and you're just like, I don't care. There's literally like, okay, we can binge watch Stranger Things. Now we can binge watch Daredevil when they had it. Or like, and then out of that, after that, there was nothing. Like, there was nothing really to watch because it just wasn't interesting. It wasn't good quality. Um, Disney plus again, you know, like what you said, um, had Mandalorian, which was great. And then other shows started coming out and it's kind of like, uh, all right, whatever. You know, some of the stuff they're releasing just isn't the best. It's okay at best. And then we get Um, Boba Fett, which for eight, what, six, seven, seven episodes banked on what two names, star Wars and Mandalorian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and I think that has a lot to do with it is, I feel like the way people are voting now is like, listen, if you're not going to put out quality, I'm not going to subscribe to you. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the quality, again, it can range. You can have your own definition of quality. And, and I thought, think maybe HBO Max, one, being done with the day and date helped. Um, but then, like you said, like there's quality on there. Batman, the animated series is on. Like all, like all the DC Back stuff is, yeah. is on there. Batman Beyond, like all the DC animated stuff is on there. Like I've been watching some of that on there. Um, you actually have like the quality movies like Godzilla versus Kong and you know, whatever else like, like, you know, the Batman's on there now, like these bigger movies are on there. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's some garbage on there too, but they have more, they have more quality than they do garbage where I feel like the other streaming services have more garbage than they do quality. And people are looking at it saying, uh, even if it's eight bucks a month, it's not worth my eight bucks a month to wait around for once a year to have a show. Like I might as well just cancel it. Yeah. And I think I think the consumer is sending a message to streamers, put out quality or out. Yeah. And I think, you know, one thing that needs to be mentioned is Peacock has completely nailed it on what they're doing. They're offering their service for free. But if you mm-hmm. want to pay for top tier stuff, like, you know, I pay $4 for WWE and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so people are like, okay, I don't have to have Netflix. I can go subscribe to Peacock for free and I get my sitcoms that I love, original mm-hmm. content, stuff like that. Um, and you know, going back to HBO Max, they're putting out original stuff as well. Um, and there's gonna be nonsense everywhere you go. But yeah. That that lies in the hand of us, the viewer. Show right. them what you want to watch by what you click on. You yeah. Know? Um, and Netflix, where they've dropped the ball, is they put out so much mediocre content lately, mm-hmm. and they've raised their prices and they've yeah. gotten rid of stuff. So you mean to tell me you're losing all these shows, but you're gonna raise their price? Like, how does that? How is that a good business model? It yeah. Work for me. Yeah, no, none at all. And, that, and that's where I think, so it's good for us who love theaters yeah. because this means, guess what? You're sending the message to the studios as well. Uh, streaming, we're not, we're not going to completely just bank on streaming. And if you look at box office numbers and everything, people are going back to the movies. So, hey, that's great. And so now we're selling the studios, listen, if you want us, like we're showing up for the movies. We know you'll put, you know, for the most part, put quality, put effort into most of these movies, right, that will show up and see that you're pouring into money. But at the same time, it's like if you want us to also subscribe to your, you know, to double dip and subscribe to your streaming, we need to see quality on that as well. Or or just put all the stuff we already love from the past on there. Mm-hmm. You know, you, it's like you got to have one or the other. Like the whole reason why I subscribe to Disney Plus is because I wanted to see all my old cartoons like Chippendale Rescue Rangers, DuckTales, Tailspin, Darkwing Duck, because – I, you know, I can't find that stuff. I mean, I guess I could if I really wanted to, but I have to purchase the DVD set, right? Or I can just subscribe to eight bucks a month and get those old cartoon series. And that's great. But you know what? Where Disney Plus made me mad, and this is another thing, like, again, like, you got to know your audience is those are the, those are the cartoons I want to watch. I want to show those kids, my kids, those shows. But guess what? It's not on, those shows aren't on the kids' profile. Oh, wow. So it's like, Really? Like you're not putting those old shows on the kids profile when I want my kids to be on that profile because, you know, because I know, I know they have National Geographic and they have Marvel and all this stuff that I may not be ready for my kids to watch yet. Mm-hmm. But I want them to watch these cartoons and they're not even on there. Like that, I told my wife, that's another big reason. Why I'm like, why do I even have Disney Plus then? Yeah. Because I don't want them scrolling on my thing and stumble upon something that I don't want them to see, which oh, yeah. you would think on Disney Plus, you wouldn't have to worry about that, but you do. 
Yeah, we had a similar situation. I can't remember what show it was, but there was something my daughter wanted to watch, and it was approved by us because we pre-watch pretty much anything my our kids watch beforehand, just make right. sure it's good, and um, especially if it's you know like a sitcom setting or whatever. But there was something else, and it was just like they had to be on our profile to watch it. And I was, I, same thought was like, that's not very responsible, you know, because yeah. it's clearly a kid's show. Why are you? And that, that's where I don't, Disney is like the main company where I, I, th- I have like a love hate with it where I'm like, mm-hmm. is that part of their agenda? <laughs> you know? yeah. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but I'm also like, there is a small part of me that thinks maybe that's not an accident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, it and, and it's out and it makes me uncomfortable. And yeah, and it's and it's dumb, and I'm just like, come on, like, yeah. I want to show, and, and I get it. Now, I know people may argue, well, then you just sit there with your kids and and watch it on your profile, which I understand. And no, know what I have ex- done that actually. That's what I've been doing. Is all right, girls, y'all want to watch Ducktales? Fine, let's sit down and we watch it together, and that's totally fine. But it's still just frustrating because it's like if I have something I need to do and I need yeah. the kids to be quiet for ten minutes, mm-hmm. I would like for them just just to be able to go and do it and not have to worry about anything. Um, but yeah, so I think like, I just think that consumers, I like that us consumers, I feel like I finally realized that these companies, we don't have to give our money, yeah. our monies to these companies, that with our money, we can tell them what they need to do. And if not, fine, we're out. And so hopefully to, to you know, push back a little bit on these companies who think they can just bank on their name and be done with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, you can't. And so, you know, give us some quality, give us what we want. Or we don't have to give our money to you. We'll give it to somebody else who may be doing it. Or we'll find other ways to go about it. Like I've already told my wife, I'm going to start buying DVD sets of these old cartoons and stuff just so I can just watch them with my kids whenever I want and the heck and save yeah, the money, save, save the monthly the monthly payments, you know? Yeah. 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 You don't have to worry about it, you know? Yeah. Um, I have a, pr- a bold prediction when it comes to these streaming wars, whatever you want to call it. I think very soon it's going to come down and it's going to be the big three of streaming. I think all these other ones, I think the trend of them going down mm. are a sign, but I think it's going to come down to, I think Peacock will be there cause it's free, but I think yeah. it's coming down to Apple TV, HBO max and Disney because the, the Disney mm. name is, is going to stay. Yeah. It'll um, stay. And, and, and Apple, why I say Apple TV is because they're putting out some good stuff too. Their, their original movie just won best picture, uh, mm. Coda. Um, which first time in years, I'm actually like, great, you know, yeah, you actually yeah, know a movie all heard of and loved one best picture. So I was thrilled about that. Yeah. Um, so I, I think those are the big three right now. And the other ones, I mean, I don't really know what they have going for them right now because Netflix, once stranger things is over, you're, you think you're hurting now. Cause that, that is the one property people mm. just love myself yeah. included. Um, but after yeah. that, yeah. I know there's not much to look forward to. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens with these streaming things. And and so, yeah. So what did we learn on both of these, man? Like the consumer, like if we want to put both of these in a thing, what you can learn studios, the consumer has now, I believe, woken up and said, we're not just going to sit here and be force fed whatever you give us. Like we know we have power here and we can vote with our with our dollars and we will happily bow out. So give us. Give us what we want as consumers, or we're out. And power over me. Exactly. I was having that conversation with Katie just yesterday, <laughs> and I quoted that whole scene. Uh, and here's one final thing. I don't know if it's final thing, but I just thought of is one of the things that led people to streaming away from cable, satellite, because the real losers in this is Direct TV, Dish Network. <laughs> yes. You know. Yeah. Um, is to cut the cord. That was the thing for cost. Yep. Okay. Well, now there's so much streaming services, the cost is starting to equal out because we're subs- people are subscribing to all this and people are like, wait a minute. No, I don't. I'm and you gonna- have to have Wi-Fi on top of it. Yes, and the so- Wi-Fi on top of it. So it's like, okay, I need to, I need to scale back. So people are like, what do I need to scale back on? Well, if I got a choice, I'm going to get rid of Netflix over HBO Max. I'm going to get rid of Hulu over blah, blah, blah. So I yep. think that's part of it too. It's just so much. Yep. Yeah, so they need to get it together. They're going to have to, I think they're going to have to do like they did with digital copies of movies where you had all the, like each studio had a different digital copy, copy company. And then finally, I don't know who started, but said, hey, we're going to have movies anywhere. Movies anywhere. Yep. Boom. And then so many, I think Paramount's the only one not in it, but everybody else is pretty much in it. Like, yeah. you know, so I think you might, or maybe we'll have something like that. Maybe it'll be a three, or maybe there'll be some kind of alliance 
to where it's like, all right, you can get all your streaming services under one umbrella. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So, well, folks, thanks for watching. Comment below. What is your favorite streaming service? Uh, what do you think the future of streaming services is? And um, drop something in there about your favorite uh, theater experience lately. Are you going? Are you going back to the theaters? We hope so because yeah, we do. They're great. So. I got to go because my wife just texted me a, a, a list of things she wants me to do before I go to work today. So. Yep. And I got a list of things to do too. But we made time for you. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe Thank if you, you haven't. We will see you guys next time. Peace out.